endings, the part of your story where it's all supposed to come together. It's the big climax, the reason we're watching. It's also one of the most difficult parts of a story to write, and very few stories pull off a fantastic ending. In the last two videos, I talked about the mistakes writers make in Acts 1 and 2. With this video, I'm going to go in a bit of an opposite direction. I'm going to start out by explaining how to build a great ending, show some examples of a couple great endings and how they work, and then go through some mistakes afterwards. The reason I'm doing it this way is because many people have different ideas on how endings should work and what goes into a great one. So when I talk about fixing some of these mistakes, I want you to know what I mean when I talk about building a strong ending for your story. Before I begin, I want to say that some parts of storytelling are natural and organic, meaning we can see the pattern and identify how to emotionally and meaningfully impact an audience. And then some parts of storytelling must be figured out within the specific context of a particular story. This video is not the end-all be-all of how to write a great ending, merely an examination of some of the organic and natural parts of how stories work. Let's begin. First, we have to ask, what do we want an ending to do? In a narrative drama, you want your ending to bring the emotion and meaning in the story to its highest point of tension, then resolve in a clear way that is both emotionally impactful and meaningful to your audience. Most writers understand the emotion side. Of course you want to leave your audience feeling emotionally impacted. But many writers fail on the meaning part, which is why there are so many forgettable stories with endings that seem well structured. When I'm talking about an ending being meaningful, I'm talking about what the ending is saying about how people should live or what they should believe. I'm talking about the values, beliefs, and philosophical ideas embedded in the conflict of the story. The meaning is the part of the story that stays with you after you leave the theater. This is what people mean when they say that the story had something to say. When you're building a great ending, it's not just about ending it at the highest point of conflict and letting your hero get whatever they want. It's about creating meaning in your story so that your climax is not only emotional, but also deeply meaningful. Okay, so how do we create an ending that is both emotionally impactful and meaningful? To understand this, we need to look at the stakes of the story. The stakes are what can be gained or lost as your character pursues what they want. Your story should have three levels of stakes. There are three different things that can be gained or lost in a story. The first level of stakes is the external stakes. This is the external thing the character is trying to do or get. When I talk about a character's want, that usually is in the external stakes. In Django Unchained, Django wants to find and free Broomhilda, his wife. Broomhilda's freedom is at stake. In the Shawshank Redemption, Andy wants to get free of the prison his freedom is at stake. The second level of stakes is the internal stakes, which you could also call the relational or emotional stakes. In Django Unchained, it's Django and his relationship to Broomhilda. If Django cannot rescue her, they will always be separated and the relationship will be lost. In the Shawshank Redemption, it's Andy's relationship with Red. Andy wants to instill hope within Red. And the third level of stakes is the philosophical stakes, which most people forget to add into their story, but this is where the meaning comes in. This set of stakes is about what the characters believe, how those beliefs influence what they do, and how those beliefs are put into conflict with the world around them. Usually, the philosophical struggle will focus on two competing value systems that are constantly in conflict throughout the story. In Django Unchained, there are two values that compete. The values of freedom, represented by Django and Dr. Schultz, versus the values of oppression, represented by the various slavers Django and Dr. Schultz encounter, but mainly Calvin Candy. In the Shawshank Redemption, there are also two values that compete. The values of hope, represented by Andy, and the values of despair, represented by Brooks and Warden Norton. The philosophical conflict is where the meaning of your story sits. It's the reason the audience truly cares, because through the events of the story, the philosophical conflict will make a statement about the world or how life should be lived. In The Shawshank Redemption, the story is making a statement about hope. In Django Unchained, the story is making a statement about freedom. 
So that is the three sets of stakes in a great story. Now let's talk about implementing them into a story. Way before you get to the end of your story, you need to understand what the stakes of your story are. If you don't begin your story establishing the stakes, you will not be able to build a strong climax at the end. In the first scene of Django Unchained, we see Django as a slave. This is Django in oppression. He is freed by Dr. Schultz, who shows Django freedom. From the very first scene, we are dealing with the philosophical stakes embedded in this story. Freedom versus oppression. This begins a change in Django, a change in how he sees himself and how he should live. He grows in skill and confidence as he handles different external obstacles like capturing bounties. Then Dr. Schultz and Django set off with a new goal, finding and rescuing Django's wife, Broomhilda. In the Shawshank Redemption, we begin with Andy on trial for the murder of his wife and her lover. He is innocent and is wrongly accused. He is then sent to prison full of guards and prisoners who want to harm him. Immediately, the story establishes the philosophical stakes. Andy is in a hopeless situation. Will he be able to remain hopeful? Immediately, we see the external stakes and the philosophical stakes of the story. The internal stakes of the story develop a bit later as Andy and Red become friends. The beginning of your story will be about clearly setting up what's at stake. Without stakes, the story is meaningless. If the story is meaningless, then it will sit in the pile of thousands of other mediocre screenplays that are trying to become a movie. The final important element is to make sure to bring the story to a clear climax in the end. This is extremely important for both emotional impact and meaning. You want it to be clear whether or not your character passed or failed in regards to each of the stakes in the story. This clear pass or fail gives clarity to the audience. When this is set up correctly, the audience feels exactly what you want them to feel because there is no confusion and the film can clearly say something. Let's look back at our examples. Does Django free Broomhilda or not? Pass or fail? Does Django reunite with Broomhilda? Pass or fail? Does Django embrace freedom or fall back into oppression? Pass or fail? Does Andy escape from prison? Pass or fail? Does Andy instill hope in red? Pass or fail? Does Andy hold on to his hope or does he fall into despair? Pass or fail? When there is confusion, the audience doesn't feel anything. Confusion rarely brings deeper meaning or emotional impact. Some films have successfully done so, but the list is extremely short. So now that you understand what goes into a strong ending, let's begin building out the climax of your story. Your goal should be to create a sudden reversal in the story. All hope is lost, but suddenly everything is flipped on its head and your hero wins. Or the hero has clearly won, until suddenly everything is flipped on its head and your hero loses everything. This creates an intense moment of emotion and meaning, and this needs to happen with all three of your stakes to create a strong climax. Ideally, to create a strong emotional reaction as well as strong meaning, you want to build a sudden reversal that happens after multiple major setbacks. Feelings are relative. Levels of joy and satisfaction are closely tied to levels of pain and suffering. And so, if you want to build a climax with the highest amount of emotional impact, you must create events that are emotionally opposite from that climax. So all is lost, your hero won't get what they want, they will also fail in their relationships, and the values they fight for will be overrun. But suddenly, all of this changes. This brings the audience from despair to elation, or elation to despair, depending on the type of ending your story has. Okay, so now let's take a look at two films and examine how they follow these ideas to create emotionally impactful and meaningful endings. First, we'll look at Django Unchained. Let's quickly remind ourselves of the three sets of stakes in the story. Does Django free Broomhilda or not? Pass or fail? Does Django regain his relationship with Broomhilda, pass or fail? Does Django embrace freedom or fall back into oppression, pass or fail? As we enter into the third act of the film, it seems like Django is going to get exactly what he wants. 
Django and Dr. Schultz are just about to rescue Broomhilda from Candy. Candy figures out the ruse and why Django and Dr. Schultz are really there. Candy forces them to pay $12,000 for Broomhilda. And this is a semi-success. The external and internal stakes of the story will be satisfied. Django is about to rescue his wife, and his relationship with his wife will be restored. But... You really want me to shake your hand? I insist. Candy insists Dr. Schultz shake his hand. Schultz makes a rash decision and kills Candy. This is a major setback. Suddenly, everything changes. Django tries to shoot his way out, but it doesn't work. To save Broomhilda's life, Django surrenders. Another major setback. Those still alive at Candyland decide to sell Django to the LaQuint Dickey Mining Company, a company notorious for the egregious treatment of slaves. Yet another major setback. At this point, Django has completely failed. In the external stakes, he has failed to free Broomhilda. His partner and only friend is dead, and he has been sold back into slavery to live out the rest of his days in a living hell. In the internal stakes, he has failed to regain his relationship with his wife. And in the philosophical stakes, oppression and cruelty have won out over freedom. This is the lowest point in the story, and the stage is set for a fantastic climax. While on the road to the LaQuint Dickey Mining Company, Django tricks the slavers. He gets them to set him free and hand him a gun. Django kills the slavers and the music kicks in. Is the philosophical climax of the story. Django is not given up. In this moment, freedom has won out over oppression. Notice that in this moment, it's just him and the other slaves. As Django rides away, we cut to one of the slaves in the cage, and he smiles. We see the philosophical climax of the story in his eyes. Live free. Fight oppression. Be liberated. He watches someone who looks like him be a free man. Django rides back to Candyland, and in this moment, we have the internal climax of the story. Here, Broomhilda believes all hope is lost, until... It's me, baby. Everything changes. Django and Broomhilda have been reunited, this time as free people. And finally, we have the external climax of the story. Django goes back to Candyland, kills those who are left, blows up the big house, and rides off with Broomhilda. Django has freed Broomhilda, he has regained his relationship with her, and freedom has prevailed over oppression. Now let's take a look at the Shawshank Redemption. Again, let's remind ourselves of the three sets of stakes in the story. Will Andy be able to get out of prison? Pass or fail. Will Andy be able to instill hope in red? Pass or fail. Does Andy keep his hope, or does he fall into despair? Pass or fail. Just like Django Unchained, the Shawshank Redemption enters its third act with a false victory, followed by a horrible setback. In Django Unchained, they almost rescue Broomhilda before Dr. Schultz shoots Candy. In the Shawshank Redemption, Andy gets his first real lead and possibility of gaining his freedom when Tommy describes a story told by his old cellmate. Rather than pursuing this lead, Warden Norton executes Tommy. A major setback. When Andy tries to get out of running Warden Norton's scam, he is given another month in solitary confinement. Another major setback. When Andy gets out of solitary, he is in a mentally dark place. When he tries to talk to Red about getting out, Red tells him to stop daydreaming. I don't think you ought to be doing this to yourself, Andy. This is a shitty pipe dreams. Another major setback. Then we learn that Andy requested a piece of rope from one of the other prisoners. Red fears that Andy will kill himself. Yet another major setback. At this point, Andy has completely failed. In the external stakes, he has failed to get out of prison or find any sort of justice. In the internal stakes, he has failed to instill Red with hope. Red stands on the other side of the philosophical conflict, telling Andy to give up on these pipe dreams. And in the philosophical stakes, despair has won out over hope. Again, the stage is set for a fantastic climax. The next morning, 
Andy doesn't come out of his cell for the morning count. Red fears the worst. But when they check Andy's cell, he is nowhere to be found. Until, in anger, Warden Norton throws a rock through the poster and discovers Andy's tunnel. This is the philosophical climax of the story. We suddenly realize that Andy never gave up hope. For 20 years, he held on to the hope of his freedom. And finally, he got it. Hope has won out over despair, and Andy has escaped from prison. The external climax comes in one of the most iconic shots in film history. Andy stands with his arms stretched out, finally free. And the internal climax comes when Red gets out of prison, but rather than giving up hope, he decides to follow Andy's instructions. Rather than killing himself like Brooks did, Red chooses to live. Remember, Red, hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. And we see this in this moment. Andy has gotten his freedom. He has convinced Red to remain hopeful and hope has won out over despair. A lot of major problems writers face in their third act comes from not building a story that is both emotionally impactful and meaningful. Many stories have a meaningless ending. This happens because the story is simply devoid of any philosophical stakes. To fix this problem, the writer must go back and figure out what their story is really about, what values are coming into conflict. Django Unchained says that freedom should win out over oppression. The Shawshank Redemption says that hope should win out over despair. Many stories have an ending with no real climax. This happens because the writer has not actually set up the story to build towards a specific point at the end. Sometimes this can be fine if the story is engineered that way, but most writers are trying to build a climax. You must take these three different types of stakes and bring them to their highest point of failure and then create a sudden reversal. Many stories have no meaningful resolution, or they're extremely confusing and open-ended. Clarity is very important in creating an emotionally impactful and meaningful story. If the audience isn't aware of what is at stake or which philosophical values prevail, then it's hard for the audience to feel any sort of emotional reaction. Some stories are considered too predictable or obvious. This is usually one of those criticisms that isn't actually the problem in the story, just what the audience perceives as the problem in the story. What this usually means is that there is either no philosophical stakes in the story, or the story is dealing with philosophical stakes that are extremely commonplace in mainstream stories. This doesn't necessarily mean the story is bad, it's just sort of repeating what everyone already knows. Some stories have endings that are unnecessarily complex. The writer may have written it this way because they were worried about it being too predictable or obvious. They may have had the right motivation, but their fix was incorrect. Complex does not equal deep, interesting, emotionally moving, or even original. The brilliance of many great films comes from their focus and simplicity. Focus on the external, internal, and philosophical stakes of your story. Don't allow the most important minutes of your film to be unresolved, overly complex, and uninteresting. When you look at the ending of your story as the resolution of three different sets of stakes, you can begin to see more clearly that so many third act mistakes really come down to not understanding the three types of stakes and how to correctly bring them to a climax. Understanding how to build the ending of your story is extremely important in its success. But these ideas are only helpful if you are actually able to sit down and apply these concepts to a real story you are writing. Many writers feel like they understand these ideas, but they never actually sit down and get themselves to write their stories. If you have trouble with writer's block and procrastination, then you should check out the Practical Screenwriting course. This class is made up of online videos packed with information that is guaranteed to help you build long-term focus and consistency so that you can beat procrastination and writer's block and get your story out on paper. And once you finish that first draft, the course shows you how to rewrite your draft so that you can easily find and fix your story's problems. At just over 8 hours long, this extremely valuable course is more than double the length of the average masterclass course.
If you join, the course comes with a 30 day money back guarantee, which is 100% for any reason at all. I want to make sure that every single member truly feels that they're getting a ton of value from the course. So if you want to check the course out, go ahead and click the link on screen now or below in the description. I've had more than 100 members join this course and get a ton out of it, and I'd love for you to do the same. Either way, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.